The reason why science exists is that it relies on evidence to continuously support existing theories, or when enough contradictory evidence is collected against a theory, we can supersede it with a better one that better explains a natural phenomenon. Throughout the series of The Nature of Science, I've covered several examples of this, like of Lamarckian evolution and spontaneous generation. These are more process-driven in nature, but there is one type of example I haven't really addressed yet. We are going to look at taxonomy and how theories upon which we base classification can be falsified, leading to reclassification of organisms. In the video for 5.3's Nature of Science, I introduced some general details about how Carolus Linnaeus developed his system of classification upon which we have refined and improved. We use a shorthand binomial nomenclature, the genus species, within a taxonomic hierarchy. It is upon this system we have classified cells as either prokaryotic or eukaryotic. The ultrastructure of each cell type has distinct characteristics and organelles of which we would expect to find with a new unknown cell. As you classify cells into their domains, you can continue to organize them into more specific and exclusive taxa. It's why we have the four eukaryotic kingdoms animals, plants, fungi, and protists. Imagine doing this without microscopes powerful enough to reveal distinguishing characteristics of cells and basing these judgments on morphological evidence. Imagine doing this before the 1950s, where people did not know the structure of DNA and proteins to classify organisms, let alone the technological advancements to compare gene and amino acid sequences. Linnaeus did this all before the invention of the microscope and Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, so we have to be understanding about mistakes in his classification. He couldn't do any better than he did. This is a good time to distinguish between two types of classification approaches, artificial versus natural. Artificial classification methods are anti-scientific because they are unlikely to change and not based on evolutionary relationships. Often, the basis for artificial classification are morphological characteristics. When I was a little boy, I was raised under the assumption that rhinoceroses, hippopotamuses, and elephants were classified in the now obsolete group called pachyderms, which means thick skin. It is no longer recognized by taxonomists, yet has persisted thanks to people like me since its 19th century origin. It is not used by taxonomists anymore because it is actually a polyphyletic group, meaning that there's many phylogenies. We know this due to natural classification which compares relationships between species based on common ancestors and evolutionary relationships. This allows it to be true science because new evidence can result in reclassification. Using what tools and techniques are available today, taxonomists rely on biochemical evidence. That is to say, the percent similarities between base sequences in DNA or the amino acid sequences of proteins that species have in common. Natural classification is done in a way that reflects more closely how a species evolved and morphologies do not always match the evolutionary origins of groups. Taxonomists and molecular biologists recognize and accept that there are molecular clocks. Proteins and nucleic acids of species have predictable mutation rates, which help them to deduce the time in prehistory when two or more life forms diverged. The more differences, we can assume that the further back in geologic time we find a common ancestor. The fewer differences, the more recent the common ancestor. So, while Linnaeus developed his system based on artificial classification, using the structure and appearance of reproductive organs of flowers, the system is supported by science because we have reclassified organisms whenever new evidence was produced. To help with visualizing the evolutionary relationships and the product of our classification system, we can develop cladograms. Cladograms are tree diagrams that show the most probable sequence of divergence between clades. A clade is a group of organisms that evolved from a common ancestor. Over time, a species evolves and diverges to form new species. Clades diverge at nodes, the branching points. Usually there are only two branches from each node, but there can be more present. The node represents the common ancestor and sometimes includes the shared or acquired characteristics. Reclassification can occur several ways. The first way is to combine members of several clades into a single one, and sometimes this clade is brand new. 
Take for example, human classification. Over the past several decades, reclassification has occurred a few times to better reflect new evidence regarding our evolution. Until the 1960s, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans were classified in the family Pongidae and humans in Hominidae. Since then, much biochemical evidence using DNA and protein analysis resulted in the movement of first chimps and gorillas to Hominidae as they are our closest living relatives but more evidence led to reveal that orangutans are only slightly less related to us than our cousins. The family Pongidae was eliminated, and now three cousins are classified as part of our family. Another thing that can happen is dividing a clade into several clades. Again, these clades may be pre-existing or new depending on what we need. This is the case with fig warts, with which you will do some analyzing and evaluating of prior and current classification of this group. Figwarts belong to the 8th largest family of flowering plants, originally created in 1789. Within this family began 16 genera, and eventually contained over 275 genera with more than 5,000 species. Biochemical analysis of the chloroplast DNA, specifically three genes, found that this one genus contained five incorrectly classified clades. Since reclassifying the group, this family has been bumped down to the 36th most diverse family within the flowering plants. While this reclassification does not benefit those who cultivate plants, it does help in more accurately reflecting the evolutionary relationships. Reclassification is a necessary practice in taxonomy. Without it, taxonomy would be reduced to a pseudoscience. It helps scientists predict what to expect while observing organisms based on the genes and similarities to more familiar relatives of the specimen. In reference to TOK, a major step forward in the study of bacteria was the recognition in 1977 by Carl Woos that archaea have a separate line of evolutionary descent from bacteria. Famous scientists, including Luria and Mayer, objected to the division of the prokaryotes. To what extent is conservatism in science desirable?